I sorry for the outrageously late videos. Um, I've been away for ages, but alas, uni is almost coming to an end in terms of the stress time. So, videos can be made. Um, I'm also going to sort out so I have a camera again. But alas, we're going to go through Van Flanders 2022. Vanderpol one. Let's go have a look at some numbers. So first of all, six hours forty three fifty normalized. Pretty impressive, but nothing like absolutely bonkers in comparison to Roubaix, which is normally like uh, three sixty three eighty potentially. Uh, but anyway, still nonetheless super strong power. Uh, normalized, but we'll get into some of the more juicy data in a minute. Uh, so if we just look at the the Tour of Flanders. So basically, the first like one hundred forty k is a warm up. Uh, it's 208 normalized. It was a bit harder this year than potentially I've seen in previous years. Uh, sometimes it is really, really cruisy. 45k an hour average, but again, you can see no real climbs uh, that much. It's just sort of like just cruising, um, but you can see calories burnt, 2,700. Um, so it's pretty significant. Like the three hours it does make the difference, and that's why it's a different race to um, Dwarsdorf Landrum, for example, which is a lot shorter and has a significantly smaller flat early section. So the first climb they come up to is the Erde Quermont, which they do about five times, I believe. Um, it's a lot, but you can see here, like six watts per kilo for three minutes, so pretty chill pace. 22k an hour, five and a half percent. I mean, obviously it's gone, some of it is on cobbles. Um, this part here will be on cobbles after they take the right-hand corner. So, you know, not too crazy. And then we've got the quarter here again, nothing too crazy. And the early climbs, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, aren't too hard. Um, but it's just the cumulative um, sort of stress of getting into position to climb. And I think that's one of the important things. If you see here, like the actual run up to the climb, um, if we just look at this part here, is often sort of pretty hard, like 370 watts of, for um, four minutes into the running of the Quermont, uh, which again illustrates that you've got to have good position, but also that, you know, it's not a gimme just going up the climbs, it's the before the climbs. And you can see this first sort of section before they really start to launch it, the normalized then goes up to 360 for an hour and 20. And that's, you know, really where you're starting to get a bit more tired. Um, so the first really massive climb that we had was the ten, Berg Tenhout. If we look at his peak one minute power, this comes on that climb as well. It's 727 watts. This is also the point that it went in Dwarsdorf Landron. Um, I made a video, but it seemed to go lost, but I might be able to find it and upload it later. Um, so yeah, 10 watts per kilo for 54 seconds is pretty strong this far into the race. Not a race winning move, but you know, it really did cause a lot of selections. Um, and then it was a lot smaller group um, and then you can see the canary bug is sort of what follows afterwards, which is another 400 watts. So nothing crazy, the sort of gaps have gone and over the top here, you can see they're all swapping off turns. It's still still hard, but not crazy. Um, the next climb we come up is the Erde Quermont. This is the fastest time it's been done in a long time, um, really. Uh, and you can see again, this early part here, 540 watts. We're sorting seven watts per kilo for four minutes. That's getting like seriously hard. Um, especially on coals, you'll realize that some of the power numbers maybe aren't as crazy you'd expect. It's just because, as you'll know, if you've ever ridden on cobbles, that it's a lot harder to do power on the cobbles. And you'll see this is this is the sort of steeper part. So when they turn off the, before they get to the village, which is this part here, it's significantly steeper, which is 7%. And afterwards it really flattens off, which is why you can see the massive speed thing. And then once they turn onto, onto this section, obviously, um, you know, it's sort of a downhill, uphill, and then they go uh, towards the Paderberg, um, which they do twice. So this time it was only, well, only nine watts per kilo for a minute. But still, like, you can see these efforts individually aren't always crazy, but it's just the cumulative time above, like, threshold or critical power, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, again, we've got the Koppenberg here. This is often, you know, like 40k to go, 30k to go. This is really where it starts to kick off again. You can see a solid 500 watts for three minutes. And again, it's super, super hard early on. If we look at this bit, it's more like eight watts per kilo for two minutes, uh, which is a really, really impressive numbers. And that's where the, the times are really getting super impressive. Like, I mean, eight watts per kilo for two minutes is hard fresh, let alone, you know, 230k in. And I think this is the point where you'll see stupid numbers the whole time. Then the time bug, again, not as aggressive as it always it, it can be. Um, but again, often the segments don't really um, illustrate it. So this bit here is actually the cobbled part. And then when they go uh, just over the top, it actually then doesn't become cobbled. So again, you can see eight watts per kilo for a minute. And it's just like every single time, it's just going to sap the legs a little bit. And then that's how the selections always get made. It's not necessarily like um, that it's super hard the whole time. Um, it's like, it's just hard the whole time. It's not one super nat natural effort or often, but it's just a lot of really hard efforts put together. Um, this is the Kreuzberg Hotton Berg. These aren't really like proper climbs. Um, they're on the motorway, basically. Well, not on the motorway. They're on a busy road. Um, and uh, again, you can see the speeds here don't get too low. So they go up here, it's downhill, that's uphill, and then they're going back to the Quermont, which is just over here. 
um, and you'll see the Quermont again. This is again when more attacks were made. Um, and Poggy and Vanderpoel really went clear at this point. Again, you can see 520 watts for, um, sorry, f 5 minutes 20 at 475 watts. Um, but again, it's the lower section that really is the thing because after they turn left onto this road, it then goes downhill. This is the whole cobbled section, um, which is then 511 watts for four minutes, which again, on cobble is super, super impressive. But I think the most impressive feat is actually the Paterberg, and this is often the decisive climb. And this is where Poggy really tried to, you know, put Vanderpoel on as much pressure as possible. And nine watts per kilo for a minute at the end of the race is absolutely bonkers because they weren't soft tapping in between. And if we look at the build up to this sort of uh, combination, you'll see here 400 watts for almost three hours. And then they managed to whack out these numbers. And I think that's the thing that's absolutely unbelievable. It's like all these efforts add up to 400 normalized. Okay, I would say Vanderpoel rides more like an idiot than other people, and that's not offensive to him. It's just the way that he can do more power, so he often does do more, more power. You might see some of the other guys, similar weight, maybe Van Avermaet would only be 350 for this. Um, and you might say, okay, he doesn't make the selections, but you know he used to make the selections and he probably was doing similar power. It's just that you know some people will save a bit more power, some people won't as much. Um, but I think what's interesting is the last run-in, because there was a lot of debate about how Tale Pogaccio played this, and I think in reality he played it well. Uh, if he takes him to the line, he gets battered, right? So you need to lean on Vanderpoel as much as possible. The issue is this. I think if we if we look at the the, the watts here, 340 watts for Vanderpoel, that is like mid zone three, maybe low zone three. It's really not very hard. And um, so what this means actually in reality is you haven't tired him out that much. His heart rate is actually going down as you go across. So in some ways, the, the opposite argument is that if Tade had actually pulled really hard, then it might have favoured him. And I sort of get that. I think if you're Tade, you you are going to do, literally sit on, do zero turns and just wait for him to tow you to the finish line. That's fine. Or you pull turns, but make it really hard because you're going to be more error than him. So he can eat more wind when he's in your wheel. And then you just back yourself in the last kilometer. It's going to be really like that you're going to be able to do it. But I think the issue is, is that you'd go really hard, but then Van der Poel would stop pulling with 1K to go because you'd have a big gap because obviously you're going to be stronger than them. And in that sense, you know, there's still going to be the time where you're waiting and then Van der Poel is going to go better. So I think in reality, it is the best option. Just sit on Van der Poel and just back that he has to do all the work and that you're going to be fresher. And to be honest, the sprint he pulls out is really, really impressive. I mean, 1400 peak, it was higher than what he saw in Dwarves of um, But also like he holds it for a long time. And the thing with Van der Poel, he likes to go really early. Um, and you can see this is like 1200 watts for 14 seconds, but it really peaks quite early. Um, and then he can just hold super good power for a long time. And to be honest, for Tade, I think it's the same. I think the longer the sprint, the better. He doesn't have that necessarily massive punch, but he can do super good power for a long time as well. So, you know, I think in, in reality, they both sort of want to probably go quite far out. Obviously, they got caught and all the rest of it. And then Tade Pogaccia had a tantrum at Dylan Van Bala. But this is the final thing. Three hours 20 at 400 normalized. Absolutely bonkers from Van der Poel. I mean, it's just, it is, it is quite crazy, um, the sort of level you need to be. Um, and I hope I tried to illustrate the sort of level you need to be. I mean, it's like two watts per kilo, uh, sorry, nine, eight watts per kilo for two minutes regularly, but also like, you know, 10 watts per kilo up the Hottenberg, no, sorry, not the Hottenberg, the, um, the Berg's Van, what, what, the, what is it called, sorry? Um, I always get confused with all the names, the Berg 10, but Hout, that's it. This is the, the crazy one, because you see eight watts per kilo, but then the real hard part, um, sorry, I missed it, is, uh, yeah, close to 10 watts per kilo, uh, which is super, super impressive. And then even in the past, Berg, he's still, still doing, um, like nine watts per kilo in the saddle of a cobbled climb. It's crazy. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. I should have some more out. Um, I'll stop being so lazy and really try and sort out some videos soon. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.